Welcome back to John's Films. Today we're getting right to business. We want to know, how much memory do I need in my system? To answer that question, we have to understand that there's two types of memory. I'm here in the Task Manager, which is what you see in Windows if you hit Control-Alt-Delete. I'll click the Performance tab, and here you see different components in your system and utilization statistics on them. At the top, you have your processor. This is what we've looked at recently in other videos and the utilization of the different cores in the processor. Here is your memory. This is the system memory, or RAM as you might see it. In this system, there's 64 gigabytes of memory, 15% of which is currently utilized. And at the bottom here, I'm going to call your attention to the graphics card. This is a 2080 Ti. It has 11 gigabytes of memory. Note that here. Below you'll notice, however, that there's something they call shared GPU memory. When the GPU specifically, or the GDR, GDDR5, or GDDR6 in the most modern graphics cards, which is faster than your standard system memory. When that uh, gets full, notice there's only 11 gigabytes on this card. When that gets full, it starts to share in and swap to the memory that sits in the system. This is rather than going to disk, which would be much slower. So swapping to this memory in the system, it has a shared ability where it will share in the system at 31.9 gigabytes worth. Right now it's only using 0.1. Together you can add those up and get the statistic that represents the complete memory used by the GPU. So when we try and answer the question of how much RAM do we need, we really need to answer the question of how much RAM do we need between our graphics card and our system. Next thing we're going to do here, let's open up and you'll notice I've got the amount of graphics card memory used as the title of that window. I'll use that by putting it right in the corner so we can keep an eye on it. And then I'm going to move this off the screen so that I can open Resolve. And we're going to watch as the GPU memory utilization ramps. And then we'll see what happens and makes the system memory utilization ramp. And just how high it goes based on specific actions that we take inside Resolve. You'll notice we've already spiked up maybe 300 or 400 megabytes, uh, which is right at half a gig in terms of utilization as we launch Resolve. So the base program being loaded into memory, graphics textures take half, and if we keep an eye on here, our standard memory, you notice that's grown a bit as well. So let's baseline this. We're at 17% before we load a project, utilization in system memory, and we're right at 2.2 gigabytes in our video memory. Now I'm loading the 2080 Ti project that I just launched. It was a benchmark on my 2080 Ti and what it's like to use it in Resolve. You can check it out at the link above. I've loaded this project up and let's see what that has done to our memory utilization. It looks like it's consumed another two gigs worth. And in the system memory, we're up to 20% utilization. Most of that is going to be through the 1.9 gigabytes that are now shared with the GPU. I'm going to shrink down this window so that you can see it inside my recording window. I'm using OBS for recording and typically scale a window to 1080 so that people can actually see what's going on on their phones and whatnot. Here we go. Um, I'm going to move it just down a scotch so we can see the graphics memory in the top and anytime we need to we will flip over to the task manager. All right, so 3.6 as I start to play through this Oh yeah, it's loading up some of the textures in advance. We're at 4.1 gigabytes worth of utilized memory. This is rendered, not a Fusion graphics, so didn't do too much pain. All of this footage is color corrected. Uh, not too much else done to it. Let's see what else we got here. We've got some standard graphics, some recordings. There are a few benchmark slides here at the end, but these are already loaded as well. So you can see the texture-wise and video-wise, it's loaded 4.2 gigabytes worth of storage out of the graphics in the RAM. Uh, it's pulled about a 2 gigabytes, it looked like 3.2 now, and shared it over from the graphics card. Here we are at 4.5, 4.5 up here. All right. Now, what could we do? What would we do in our standard workflow? Well, I might add a transition, let's say, between a couple of clips. So I'm going to move this up on this timeline just so that we'll have it together. We'll add a effect, video transitions. We'll go with a non-additive dissolve. Throw that in there. You notice I did get a pretty good spike 
I'm going to throw a cross dissolve on the back end of that transit. I will throw it on the front of this one and not much move in there. Uh, titles, you know, the three dimensional titles that come with resolve these days. Let's throw that in here. See what we get. Doesn't look like it's used it yet, but if I were to run it, all of a sudden, boom, we really ran into a high. We're at 8.5 gigabytes now. And wow, I wonder if all of that was related to that one title. Take the title out, and now I'm going to replay that section. No, it looks like it was pre caching some other work. But for fun, we're going to add another title in and see what that does. Yet, yeah, it forced what's called a garbage collection, which goes through and identifies what RAM is not currently being used and doesn't anticipate being needed used in the future. That would have been that effect that I had added and deleted. And it created a garbage collection event, which took that out of utilization and got it out of the RAM. The generators, I'll now take a grayscale generator and throw it in just so that we can see what it does. We're at 7.2 gigabytes right now. But should you want to have a lot of fun, we will right click, create a compound clip. With that compound clip, we're going to create a fusion clip. We're now going to jump into fusion here. Fun. So jump into fusion. Oops, sorry. I always like to work, work in a big space. OK, so we're at 5.3. You notice it unloaded the timeline. Uh, it didn't think that it's going to have to render all that right now. It wants to have all the resources available for fusion. For fun, I'm going to jump in, grab a particle. Oh, I used bubbles last time. Let's go to glitter. Here in glitter, I will route it to the output. Now I've got glitter particles loaded. I'm at 5.5 gigabytes. But the second that I start playing it, watch this video memory up in the top left-hand corner. You can see it's having to render each of these and store them in video memory with the shaders, the lighting, everything that's been done to them. And we've just topped 10 gigabytes. Now, as you can imagine, that's created a greater need for a swap space. It's used another gig and a half out of the system memory. My total system memory is now up to 24 gigabytes, which tells me if I'm just going to be building a video, I'm going to have transitions, I'm going to have some basic fusion effects. I'm not going crazy and I'm not building 100 of those. It tells me that I can probably get away with 32 gigabytes of system memory. No big deal. However, the second you start adding lava, whew, that is lava, one. So these dots down here in the bottom, if you haven't seen this before in Fusion, in multiple display windows, if I have my third uh, monitor and my output card hooked up, I get three dots. I can press one, two, or three, or just simply drag them into the individual windows that I'd like them displayed in and display them. My memory now is at 8.6 gigabytes because it's collected some stuff out. However, I'm going to bet if we jump over to the task manager, eh, we're still at 4.5, not as bad as I thought. Uh, as it has to go through and render the lava, it's continuously rendering the lava. It is now using um, and trying to cache over here all of the glitter, really struggling. The green spots is where it has cached it, and when we run over that in the future, you'll see it working. Interestingly, the processor is not exactly killing itself. Uh, nor is the graphics card. So there's another constraint in the system. A uh, uh, prior user in the prior video pointed out there could be some single-threaded work, and sure enough, if we look here in CPU 0, you'll notice it is working harder than many of the other systems. There might be something that's only threaded up to two, four primary cores. It looks like this one's got one, two, three, four, five, six cores, a little higher than the rest, maybe. So it could be that this is not optimized entirely for a true multi-thread workflow, nor is this effort moved into the GPU. So it hasn't been offloaded yet. Whatever they're using inside this lava, whatever they're using inside of that. Fireworks are always good, right? So let's get some fireworks going as well. Um, notice it's not, not actually using it. So we're going to merge the glitter glitter out. We want to share with the fireworks in a merge node, and we're going to display that out, and I bet we blow up here. Uh, this could be fun. Let's see. Where's my fireworks? There they are in the background. You got some green fireworks popping up, and sure enough, wow, uh, graphics memory started growing and growing and growing. Looks like it's able to recoup some of these objects after they've been 
removed from the screen. And that's why you'll see this video RAM go up and down as it runs through and then garbage collects things it knows it isn't going to need again. Our task manager checking that memory, we're at 24 gigabyte utilization. Uh, you've got shared right now at four gigabytes. And that's held pretty steady, it looks like, across the last 10, 15 seconds. So we're creating a lot of pain here. Uh, this is not what you would call as something simple. Um, I'm sure there's some things you can do in here to load up a bit more. Woof, that looks fun. So I hit control on the mouse wheel to zoom out inside my Fusion editing window so I could see this circular Checo map. Um, see what was going on with that. But we have quite a lot of stuff going on inside. You'll notice it's rendering as it's flashing. It says pre-render this one or else you're going to pay, pay the price. Um, looks like that price again. Is it single threaded or do I have constraints somewhere else in the system? Tough to say. Could be memory constraints, although it's not skyrocketing the amount of shared system memory that we're using. Still at four. So I don't see that as a key problem. All right, let's go see what we get when we go into stabilization, when we go into noise reduction. And uh, to do that, I'm just going to get rid of this so that we can isolate. So we'll get rid of that fusion clip. We should watch, sure enough, as it's dropping. Garbage collection event happens, and boom, all of that memory that we had utilized got removed from the system. We'll go into our color tab. And here in the color tab, we will use the motion effects panel. Turn on a studio only effect, which is temporal and spatial noise reduction. We'll see what that does. Looks like we're at 6.8 gigabytes. Let it run, 7.6. Looks like it does increase it to some extent. Uh, let's see what else. Let's go stabilize footage that doesn't necessarily be, need stabilization, but let it run. Stabilizer. Let's stabilize this thing. 7.8 gigabytes. Looks like this is going to be CPU intensive and it stores a track and applies the track in playback, so it may not be that painful for this. Basic um, effects, resolve FX blurs. As they cache, would use RAM. Let's see what we can do with that next. Stabilizer really does not appear to have an effect. Let's see if it loads up a giant memory map or something when it gets done, though. And boom, nope, nothing huge. Lens blur, drop that on me. A little blurry, play it 7.7 .7. still, um, 4.6 shared, total memory utilization 21 gigs at the moment. So we see now that we are back out of Fusion and into Resolve proper, uh, 32 gigabytes would be just fine. I think Fusion is going to be the major reason you want to look at a larger amount of memory. So the answers to the questions, how much memory do we need? Well, you need a graphics card. I would recommend at least eight gigabytes of memory on your graphics card. The 11 gigabytes here, I sure wish I had a Titan RTX with 24, but uh, that's some $3,500 plus something. When you look at system memory, system memory 32, if you're just gonna be using Resolve and you're a kind of mid-tier workstation, if you're looking for a higher end, hit 64. You see it's growing now for some reason. Might be something else on the system running, probably OBS as I'm recording this. However, if you're going to talk about studio work or you're a bigger and uh, need to do professional work, 128 gigabytes in Fusion would not be a bad idea. So thank you for watching. Let me know what you think of this format. I tried to make it a no-nonsense format. You don't have to stare at my ugly mug. Give me a like and a subscribe if you do like it. And thank you for watching. Have a great day.